Okay. Um, okay. Ladders. This is something that a lot of people miss. Um, a ladder going up has to extend. Let me lower that some. Three feet above the port of, a point of support. So when you lean the ladder up there, if you're if you're roof or house or whatever you're getting up to, that ladder has to extend. Uh, other things with ladders, if it has metal or if it has paint or a solvent spilled on it or dripped on it, then it might not be as strong as it's rated for, right? It might say 300 pound rating, which is what I need to get on the ladder. It might be rated 300 pounds, but it's had some solvent and stuff, and now a couple of the steps can't quite hold 300 pounds, okay? So, I mean, you, you have to be smart when you use ladders. Ladders are, I mean, it's, it's something everybody, including myself, has ignored in the past. They just grabbed it and went. But I mean, you're, you're trusting your your life and your livelihood to being on that ladder. You ought to you ought to give it a little once over. And if it looks dangerous, if it looks like it's not satisfactory, bring it up to your uh, instructor or your boss. Tell them, say, hey, I don't think this ladder's safe. And if it's deemed unsafe, then we'll talk about in the slide what to do with it. But you wanna you wanna tag it dangerous, do not use, and get rid of it. Okay. So don't just throw it in the dumpster. What happens if you throw it in the dumpster? Jesse walks by and says, ooh, that's a cool ladder. I might use it in my house. Okay? So don't throw it in the dumpster. All right? Another thing with ladders, it's not brought up here. Um, how far, if you're using a portable ladder and leaning up against something, how far from the base of the wall should your ladder be? Four feet. How much? One quarter. One quarter of the working height. That means if you have a ladder that's extended 20 feet in the air and you have only 12 foot, you know, now you got a 20 foot ladder, but the working height is only 12 foot. Okay? So I'm, I'm just using that example. It's the only carry away. It's 12 foot of the working height, or it's one quarter of the working height. So what's one quarter of 12? All right, all right. Nobody tell Jesse the right answer. <laughs> Okay, one quarter of 12 is three. So the ladder, regardless of how tall it is, should be three foot from the base, okay? From the base of the wall, all right? So fixed ladders. Fixed ladders are permanently mounted. That doesn't mean they're tied on. Uh, this is something else with ladders that I'm kind of adding that during the slide. Fixed ladders aren't tied on. Fixed ladders are bolted or welded or some permanent means of attachment to a wall, to a, something you have to climb, okay? Fixed ladders shouldn't be at, they, they should be between a 75 and 90 degree angle from horizontal. So if you got a fixed ladder, you shouldn't have to be climbing like this. It needs to be mounted to the surface. It can have a small incline, but it should be no more than, uh, uh, or no less, I mean, than 75 degrees from up, upright. So uh, that's okay. That's okay. Where you get to 75, that's okay, and then no more. Okay, so that's what a fixed ladder. A fixed ladder is required to be covered if it's more than 20 feet. I mean, you have a cage around it. Okay, um, some places allow safety ladder climbing devices like uh, um, those safe line things that the wind guys have to climb with. Everybody know what I'm talking about. If you're into climbing, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's something that you hook on. And when you fall, it has something to do with speed and weight, and it pulls tight. It's like a, it's like a, a break or something. I've, I've never seen one, so I don't really know. But those are allowed. Um, if you start sliding too fast, it's like a break, and it clamps down on your safety line. So some places allow that. It's kind of like, like seatbelt, basically. Like when you move yeah, that would make sense. Right? Too hard and stuff. That would make sense. Why do they have to cover the ladder over that height? What's the point of the cage? So if you fall back, you don't fall all the way down. You fall into something. Okay. Uh, scaffolding. Um, do not alter or remove the scaffold while in use. If somebody's using it, don't say, okay, I'm holding on, move me over here. Um, in the handout, I think it was in the handout that I gave you at the beginning of the year for electrical safety. If you read through that 92-page uh, handout, that really happened. A guy was on aluminum ladder, aluminum scaffolding, and they rolled it right into something energized. Okay, 
So don't don't just say go for it, you know. Climb down, get everybody off, get all your tools off. Don't leave your tools up there. Because you hit a bump, tools come flying down and you know this thing you weren't protected. So don't leave anything. That even goes, I should have mentioned with step ladders. Don't leave anything on a step ladder. They're not shelves. Okay? When you come down off that, even if you're not, don't don't put all your tools down. I know it's easy to do and I've done it, but if you're up there wiring something or sawing or banging or hammering, whatever, don't set your drill down on that platform, okay? Because if somebody bumps into it, it comes down, it might only be a six foot ladder, but six foot's a long way to fall when the screw gun goes through your tennis shoe, okay? So don't leave anything on top of the step ladder. Some step ladders are designed at the top to have holes for you to put stuff in. Put your screwdriver, your hammer, your paint bucket, whatever. But don't leave stuff on there. If you do, I mean, I've done it, and everybody, everybody will continue to do it. But you, you know, you're taking into account whether that thing's going to fall off and injure somebody. Okay. And some people will be on step ladders. They make some huge step ladders. You know, 15 foot in the air, 20 foot in the air as a step ladder. So it's like a screwdriver, and somebody dies or lifts it up. Yeah, like maybe it would be. <laughs> Thank you, Jesse, for bringing that up. Um. So, so when you move scaffolding, you shouldn't have anything. Don't leave a ton of bricks on the top shelf and move it. Take up what you need, use it, and then move it. Um, protect workers from overhead hazards. Uh, you want to make sure that the top part of your scaffolding, you're not going to be stepping up into something. What's the biggest hazard that people run into overhead? Power lines. Power lines. Close. They need power. Power lines. That's what nobody thinks about. I won't say nobody. Most people don't think about power lines. Um, in that same handout, you probably read about the guy who's got the 20, he's doing chain link fence, and he's carrying this 20 foot length and he kind of sticks it up in the air this way, and he's walking and he gets nailed because he goes into those power lines, right? Same thing. People don't think about it. So when you're up there and you stand up into these, you know, 220 volt power line that's unprotected going into your house, you know, in your place of business, place of businesses might be uh, 4160 power lines going in, okay? Big time voltage. So when you're standing on an aluminum scaffold, uh, you just make a nice piece of the pie. You become a part of the circuit, okay? Be sure to lower the building. Pardon me? I said be sure to lower the building. I have to lower it when it's lifted. Yes. That's another, if, if you're, this isn't part of this, but like Mary says, anytime you're transporting stuff, she's talking about, they had a, was it a truck that was raised and had the, had the bucket still raised and said, I'm not going to take the time to lower the bucket. I'm just going to drive over that way. And the bucket came in contact with power lines. Okay. Well, all the tires have to So the guy wasn't grounded for putting the show in, was it? The guy wouldn't have died, no. No, I mean, but inside the truck, he was fine as long as he didn't touch anything. As long as he didn't touch anything, it just depends on if something was dragging the ground or whatever. You know, but to if you're ever in an accident and the power lines come across your car, don't jump out. Okay? Your tires will ground you, remember that. Unless it's pouring down rain. Then water does conduct. Um, if scaffold is higher than 10 feet, use guardrails, midrails, and tow boards. Remember these? Guardrails, midrails, tow boards. Uh, standard railing, top rail, midrail, posts, tow boards. Okay, you gotta use those if you're over 10 feet. Okay. Use wire mesh between guardrails and tow boards if people work or pass underneath. Okay. So that's just to keep stuff from being knocked out and clobbering people on the head. Um, don't use the scaffolding frame to climb up the scaffold. <laughs> Everybody who's worked on scaffold has done it. They make scaffolding now that comes with built-in ladders, but don't use the ladder. Okay? It's designed to have you climb up it. It's got <coughs> evenly spaced things so you don't want you climbing up. Don't be a monkey and climb up the frame. Okay? Uh, this, this presentation uses these sources. 29 CFR 1910. This is the order we looked at reading yesterday, right? Subpart D, 1910.211 to 219. That covers walking, working, third. Um, and there's some other OSHA references and stuff. Okay? So any questions so far?
If not, we'll jump into this guy. Maybe. 